uh, some of the issues um, in the paper. So one of those is around uh, our levels of service at uh, year end. We had an internal target of 85 per cent. We haven't quite reached that. Uh, Helene, I'm really sorry. Can you speak up a little bit? Either I'm deaf or the acoustics in here are a bit of both. Okay. Thank you. I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So just in terms of our levels of service, um, an internal target of 85 per cent. Uh, at year end, we're slightly below that, uh, which is disappointing. Um, but um, uh, need to note a number of um, issues around that. Uh, so you'll note that the, so we have over 500 indicators that we report on. So if we miss out on one of those, uh, it affects the total um, uh, achievement across those indicators. Uh, some are not all recorded. Uh, so what that means is that um, in some of our targets, we don't have very practical ways of actually measuring the target that we've got. So we need to review those and make sure that we've got um, a reasonable baseline and a way of recording that. Um, most of the targets, though, are missed by a fairly narrow margin. Uh, so again, we miss the target, um, even though they're stretch targets um, and uh, have us above the average around a lot of the um, uh, local government uh, measures. An example of that is um, uh, some of the timelines, for instance, the milestones around the long-term plan. We had a number of uh, timelines uh, that were stretch targets, but actually in the end we, we met the most important timeline um, of getting the LTP completed and approved. But also things such as our website targets, um, where we had a target of 125,000 unique visitors and uh, we had uh, at year end 123,500 unique visitors. So it's not far off our target, but uh, it does mean that we miss it totally given the way that we measure these things. I think that the, one of the other issues is that because we have so many indicators, they don't necessarily tell us what's really important um, and highlight those things that we're striving for excellence in. Uh, so things such as meeting statutory timeframes, um, and uh, uh, while I acknowledge the previous conversation, um, our consenting, for instance, has improved from 75% compliance in July of last year to 99% compliance of meeting those statutory timeframes um, in June of this year. So that's a big improvement uh, in those, and in the face of vast increases um, and record highs in terms of the number of consenting requests that we have or applications. Things such as a resident satisfaction, which is actually very important because that's about what we do and how we deliver our services. Um, uh, increase in areas that we'd really focused on, so increase in transparency, um, in um, areas such as um, uh, the, how the council makes decisions um, uh, and also increase in uh, how residents feel that they can participate and influence council decision making. So an 11% increase in that. We've got a long way to go, but those are the sort of things that actually are important in terms of how people access and use our services. Um, the other things around increased access and satisfaction with our community facilities, we know that uh, people really enjoy the use of our community facilities and libraries and so forth, and as they reopen, um, we've left the targets as they were, so we need to make sure that we can actually start to increase uh, satisfaction and access to those um, as each of those reopen. Um, and our financials, of course, um, are other areas that are really important. There are others, but I think that for the next year going forward, we should really focus on some of those um, important high-level ones that indicate how the services are working overall. Um, so we'll be doing some work on that and also um, are confident that the changes that we're putting in place are both structural and in our management teams and our accountability will also help us to lift that performance as well. Um, I won't talk specifically to the financials, um, I'm happy to respond to questions around that, um, but I also just note some other areas, uh, so the progression around things such as um, Great for Christchurch, uh, the work around the SERA transition uh, that you'll talk about tomorrow, um, and the work around uh, becoming a digital council, so things such as a simple early uh, changes such as dog registration, changes of address and the website upgrade that went live on 1st of July. We've had good feedback around those things, uh, but are examples of how, again, we can improve access 
uh, and the, the experience of people using our services. And to support that internally, we've got some uh, development um, and uh, training um, of staff available right across the organisation, particularly around change. Um, so uh, we've, we've been running workshops for the organisation and um, uh, using uh, a little leaflet that people can now have um, uh, next to their desks, one side talking about understanding change and where people are on change and, and what you need to do, and the other are really tools um, uh, that, that uh, people can use. So these are just easy re reckoners that people can have um, as they're working through what are fairly difficult times and challenging times when you're busy but also major change underway. Uh, we've also got change networks of key champions in the organisation who are helping to drive some of this as well from across the organisation. Um, and again, uh, so this becomes part of everyday uh, work uh, and supports those other projects that are underway. So I'll leave it at that, but happy to take any questions. Yani. Thank you. I just um, wanted to understand if we are doing any local work around the consenting. So I know we're doing this whole partnerships approval and you're looking at Great for Christchurch and customer services. One of the suggestions that I've put forward, which I don't quite know how to get um, examined, is to actually put consenting back into local service centres so that when local people have issues, they can actually go and talk to someone locally. And we still seem to be centralising all our services. So is there any work going on to understand at a local level what sort of local service delivery we can put back into a service? Um, so you know we've got our work on Fit for Future, which is a, a look at how we structure our services and our staff across the organisation. So we're looking at all of those options. Uh, but there has also been uh, quite a lot of discussion around how do you um, provide a number of services at the local level um, and um, thinking about how we deliver those um, and what staff uh, community boards have uh, talked about um, how useful it would be to have um, some of our staff more closely linked to service centres. But when are we going to start seeing, I guess what I'm really asking is, like, when are we actually going to start seeing those results, given we're doing a whole bunch of stuff for like partnership approvals for the central city, Rebuild Central, um, but when are we going to start seeing the change at those local services? So that was my fault, partnership approvals doesn't just no. apply in the central city, it is, um, it, but, but some of the big projects are in the central city. So it, it, when you look at the list of things, I'm sure you've read the um, pamphlet that's been done, where it says the, the projects that are likely to be approved, Central City's one of them, but it's only a component. They're actually helping New Brighton. So yeah. New Brighton's getting itself ready for quite a, a major um, you know, sort of approach through Development Christchurch. The a whole idea of wraparound support absolutely makes sense um, in a project like that. Yeah, no, uh, so uh, it's just that we're still centralising services. Yep. So, But Carleen's just told you that they're working very hard. Yeah, when so can we start seeing... Well, we, we, well yesterday. No, that's right. Um, so, so, so we're undertaking a process looking at all our options. We may not end up doing that in terms of putting uh, people out in service centres, but that's that's the, some of the feedback that we've had, is that uh, community boards, service centres and uh, local communities would like that. So mm. we'll, we'll have to balance up all of those options um, and um, or ha likely have a change proposal around the major restructure uh, towards mid to late August. Um, and then uh, following that will be some discussion around, so how do we actually deliver on the ground? OK, thank you. Um, just the SEND, SNAP and SOLVE, we were expecting to get some information back um, People are using the app, but we don't have any any measure on how many of those that people have used it. Complaints have been sorted, dealt with. Um, I, I, for example, I've used it and still waiting. It's nearly two months. So, I mean, there, there seems to be a gap in the feedback loop to tell people what's happening. But when can we expect to get information? Um, uh, so, so I apologise um, if that was asked for. Um, we'll do that. Um, but that's not a consistent problem that we've got. Um, so uh, some people are getting feedback straight away. Um, yeah. And, but what's and the problem? Well, it just yeah, but, seems... But, yeah, but yeah. the information's not in the report. Yeah. We'll make sure yeah. that the information's in next month's report. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, but, but yeah. it's, yeah. I mean, I don't want to use myself as an example. No, it's, and don't, it's because it's anecdotal. System. I mean, if yeah, we're going to do anecdotal, then I'll tell you the yeah. Facebook story, it's, which says, sent it in the yeah. next day it was fixed. You know, and yeah. <laughs> uh, for this particular app, there's no mechanism automatically. No, there is a mechanism, okay. well, but you have missed out, that? and I don't know why. Right. So maybe you could send your personal example through, and we'll follow it up. So, um, Jimmy. Sorry, just a final question for me. Just the thing we were still waiting for was the list of bridges and the repair program for our bridges. What's going to be fixed, what's not going to be fixed, and what the time frame is. Right, I'll um, perhaps ask Dave Adamson. List of bridges, what's going to be fixed, and timetable. The bridges. All the bridges. But this came out of the Wolston discussion. So, just trying to understand the strategic overview of how we prioritising bridge repairs, quantum of budgets, versus ones that aren't going ahead. Bridge repairs are funded um, in line with the NTA criteria, and so that's why originally we were going to replace it, now it's going to be repaired. I would actually go and have to go and have a look at the program of when it is on the program for its repairs to be, uh, to be finished. Um, the, the, the question was about um, the whole program for bridges. A whole Deal with that through bridges? the Environment Committee, perhaps we could pick that up, get a report. Sorry? Deal with that yeah. through the Environment Committee. Yeah. Pick up a John report. has a, a detailed report in the uh, ITI Committee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So report back through there. Okay, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, one question. Okay. On page three, <coughs> regarding to the grade for high church, this is a very good goal, you know, for the uh, council to make the council more efficient, effective, and responsive to our residents. I just, my question is whether a council consider to, case, <clears throat> to take a case the study, especially for lost uh, kind of request for the service, uh, the items are still pending in there for a long time period. For instance, like uh, uh, take an example, like horseware, the uh, ray barn, the, the road, that kind of issues, I remember uh, the first of uh, 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 the October of last year, actually sent it to the uh, <clears throat> the council to proceed, but up to now still, you know, the uh, try to the follow up. But the, back to the uh, 16, uh, the 15 of June, we are sent it to the, uh, the the you know the, the staff, you know, again try to follow up until one month just get this uh, response. So my concern is whether we take this case study, you know, and then we might know actually what the, uh, the customer constitute their particular concern or their worry about it. Then we can improve, yes. give the substantial improve. Yes. But this is what we've talked about previously, I think, isn't it? Yes, um, case study is a really good way of actually following through a process <coughs> and understanding where the problems might lie. Um, of course, each case might be different, so it's really what themes come out of that. It's, it's exactly the same issue Councillor Johansson just raised. Yes. So they're very useful as a way of improving our services. I, I hope we can take an, all those pending uh, issues, you know, take more seriously, mm -hmm. then we can have a, mm -hmm. a, a, a woman. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Phil. Thanks, Kelly. My question was really around the um, the website again, and like it's the job registration you mentioned. That that seems a pretty impressive um, for the increase in registrations and will help efficiency and people who can can get that job done straight in a straightforward way. The it's really um, and and like clearly that the webs the the view of the website and how it looks is is uh, improving. I'm just wondering about the work though in terms of actually having it more sort of easier to use. How what work we're doing on that. Yes, so, um, uh, so, so the team has done a, a stunning job in a very short time frame to get uh, the new website up and running. Um, so it's an ongoing process uh, to continually improve it, uh, and as we get feedback that's helpful as well. Uh, there's also quite a bit of work to do about the information on the website, and actually one, make that more accessible, but two, actually look at whether it's current um, and uh, relevant still. Uh, so um, it's an ongoing piece of work, but um, I think they did incredibly well to get where they did in a very short time. Any others? All right. Uh, David. Thank you. Um, just um, health and safety. Uh, thanks for the 
um, information in this report. I do note that um, perhaps some of the increased stats are, are a response to people reporting um, injuries and pieces a little more diligently these days. Um, would it be possible for me to, to sort of dig into this a little deeper and just see um, the extent of injuries? I mean, some of them, the near misses do, uh, um, and, and medical injury ones do sort of concern me a little. I'd like <coughs> find out a little bit more of those if possible. Yep, I'm happy to do that. So the executive leadership team sees those um, and uh, then that allows us to ask questions about, you know, is this a one-off, is this something that we know, um, we need to really focus on? Um, so we do get that information, we could share that with the regulation and I do note um, we are having a briefing at some stage um, on elected members' responsibilities um, on health and safety. Will that be well before the implementation of the Act in 2016, or? Uh, well, yes, so it's um, likely to be mid to late August. Um, so it's, uh, we, we, we were really waiting to any finalisation of the issues around the Act, but given that it's been delayed, uh, we'll provide what we can around that. Um, and essentially one of the important things is that you make sure that we are accountable uh, and, um, you know, um, monitoring these issues as well. I'm actually wondering whether this um, is, is not within the brief of the uh, Chief Executive and Employment Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know whether um, someone can just double check the terms of reference of that because it may be that a regular report to the, um, to the Chief Executive and Employment Subcommittee might actually be a way of generating uh, ongoing uh, review of health and safety matters, which I think is the responsibility of the council, but as you say, a smaller subcommittee of the council might be um, better focused on, on that issue. <coughs> May even be regulations and consents. Mm. Well, except that that's, it's really to do with the staff of the organisation, so employment matters, I think, um, might be a better focus. But I'm not saying that um, I'm willing to take on more work on, on, on a committee that I chair rather than one that you chair, so um, it, we'll, we'll have a discussion about it. But it, it seems to me that there's a potential on, on both, both, both legs of the double. Yep. Um, health and safety is a, a, is a uh, risk, so therefore in most organisations I presume the, the audit and risk? No, it does. It definitely goes through audit and yeah, risk. Right. Um, but I think that having a report generated for um, the uh, for this committee might, might actually be a better focus, although regs and consents meets more frequently. So that might be a reason for um, choosing that one. Oh, Excellent. Glad, glad you're all interested. We right? are all interested. <laughs> but, you know, regardless of the law change, I think we mm. should be taking... Um, an act of interest in health and safety. So I'm really pleased that Dave's continued to, to raise it. Thank you. All right, um, would someone like to move that the report of the Chief Executive be received? Paul Lonsdale, seconded David East. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. The next item on the agenda is